You need to watch this video and I'll be back in a moment to tell you why. Hi everybody, welcome back to Geezer Rider. This is our annual spring PSA public service announcement, safe riding advisory, whatever you wanna call it, um, with a twist. And like I said before, you need to watch this video it's just that important, and I'll tell you why. At the time I started writing the script for this video, the ice and the snow had still not completely melted here in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States. Yet, not far away, I could hear the sustained roar of an engine and the squeal of tires from some car or truck on a public road, which was doing a burnout like tires were free. I'm sure we're all in agreement we'd rather not be judged in perpetuity based on, based on our worst day and that we've all misbehaved in one degree uh, or another over the years. Hopefully we lived, learned, moved on, and tried not to involve others in our shenanigans. As the title of this video suggests, a few times throughout each year, I try to find a way to reach out to as many people on motorcycles as possible. I also try to include as many as possible of those that drive 4, 6, 10, 18, or whatever combination of wheels is not a bike or a trike to raise awareness and see if we can't finally all coexist on the roads without too many of us becoming statistics and a list of those who are damaged, injured, or killed on a motorcycle. I've said it before, and even included it in some of my videos. Well, I think the motorcycle crash video, channels on YouTube, etc., and other media platforms serve a purpose. I think a steady diet of them just makes you numb and nauseous. Sometimes we need to focus on why we always need to be riding defensively and have an escape route with as much importance as we put on studying and finding them. In other words, what can we do to make our ride safer? I started this video by mentioning some four-wheeled activity that is con considered unacceptable by law enforcement and many citizens. Under the best of circumstances, there are individuals in cars, pickup trucks, etc., who have watched one too many TV shows about street racing and performance modifications. Instead of proving their vehicle's worth on a sanctioned drag strip or track, these road legend wannabes take to the streets like it's their personal playground and mash the accelerator to the floor with little regard to what happens to them, let alone anyone else on the road. I've seen some people on two wheels that seem, seem to have the same issue, and it honestly makes me sad to think that we're often all viewed through the same lens as a group when someone acts out that way. All this sounds fairly familiar, right? Safety, environmental awareness, at get all the gear all the time, drive defensively, head on a swivel, ride sober, blah, blah, blah. So what's different this year? Well, I'll tell you. It's now March, and unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that in the United States, this marks roughly one year since the first impacts of the global pandemic started to affect our day-to-day -day life here. For a precious few in remote locations, not much changed. However, for most of the rest of us, it meant travel restrictions, work from home, homeschooling, job loss, wage loss, and a lot of unquantified mental stress. For many, it left a feeling of helplessness and that beyond wearing PP, the personal protective equipment, mask, etc., and observing protocols, there was little you could do to ward off the virus or to keep it from impacting the lives of you and your loved ones in a variety of insidious ways. Add to this social and economic unrest, and you have the largest number of people with the worst cases of anxiety and cabin fever in recent history, and many with a mental state that is far from what it was pre-pandemic. This also sounds familiar. We hear it on the news. What hasn't been addressed yet is what's happening now. In the United States, we're starting to see some of the first groups in various demographics receive their second COVID shots. This is a good thing. The prospect of forthcoming herd immunity is now more than just a dream, and all that pent-up cap and fever and restricted liberty is looking for an outlet. So what's so bad about that? Here in the mid-Atlantic area of the United States, I see two distinct attitudes emerging. The first is those that are appreciative of the progress we've made and who are willing to deal with the mask and the remaining restrictions and protocols until we get more on top of things to some degree. The second group honestly scares the crap out of me as a motorcyclist. This is the group of individuals who are angry, that think the virus has it in for them, politically, socially, or otherwise, and who choose to respond with aggression. One of the reinstated liberties is vehicle travel and travel across state lines. 
The me first attitude has never been more dangerous with the aggression behind the wheel. Add to that the fact that many of these individuals haven't driven any significant amount of time in the past year, have rusty skills, and are also distracted by a myriad of factors previously noted. This is beyond the normal cell phone distractions and stuff that we've dealt with in prior years. They, the drive, these drivers, are objectifying all vehicles around them, meaning they see an object or an inanimate thing. They don't put a human life along with the vehicle, um, especially a motorcycle. And you, the motorcycle rider, are the epitome in their mind of whatever political or social demographic they decide to describe to you. Perhaps they figure you live a life of luxury to be out on two wheels. The fact that you are a vulnerable human being who is not surrounded by a steel cage is completely lost on those with this mindset, and they have the potential to do great harm. Sure, some of them might be sorry later, but by then it'll be too late. So what can we do? What can you do? One, you are an ambassador for motorcycling. Now more than ever, riding safely and responsibly not only elevates our perception by the general public, but could potentially save your life or those of one of your riding brothers or sisters. Two, report aggressive drivers. The type of people who engage in aggressive vehicular behavior often become emboldened if left unchecked. It's not tattling, snitching, or whatever you want to call it. What it will do is save lives. The resources of our police and public servants are stressed beyond most people's awareness. Letting them know about those with a disregard for life and property helps them appropriately commit resources, which ultimately benefit us all. And lastly, as often as possible, try to bring up the fact that you ride to as many people as possible. Let them know that you are very concerned about aggressive and distracted drivers that you drive safely and responsibly and wish everybody else would do the same. Plant the seed in their minds so that they might remember to look for motorcycles while driving. Hopefully we'll all have a safe riding season. Ride safe. Namaste.